video and video recorded. You're going to be up on TV there. All your friends and neighbors and loved ones are going to be able to watch things that you say and do, uh, which is nice because that's what technology lets us do. We start every meeting with public comment. It looks like there may be a lot here today. So let me tell you the rules that we always abide by. What's that? Do you want the sheet? I got one sheet here. Okay. Yep, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to go through that sheet. But even if you haven't signed up after this is exhausted, I'll just ask if anyone else wants to talk. So everyone gets a chance, but you get one bite at the apple. And everyone has three minutes. The other rule is we don't respond. Sounds like a strange rule at first, but the reason is we want to give everyone equal time and we <coughs> can't discuss things that aren't posted on the agenda. So our practice is to hear from you, but you should know that you can contact, and I think this crowd knows this already, <laughs> you can contact your city councilors independently afterwards and you should feel definitely encouraged to do that. Okay, so those are the rules. Um, and the first person is City Clerk Pamela Powers, please. Good evening. Um, I'm Pamela Powers, and I'm the City Clerk here for Northampton. I have two messages tonight. They're sort of public service announcement. Uh, the first, as you probably know, we've reached out with the annual street list that was distributed about uh, seven weeks ago. If you haven't already filled out your city census, I ask that you do so. Uh, our goal is to keep an accurate count of all the people in our community, and your timely responses help us to achieve that goal. So this year, we've included inside the city census a frequently asked questions informational flyer. Um, this was prepared by the Board of Registrars, and in it, we explain uh, the purpose of keeping the record of your residency and how the information is used. So we ask that you please check it out. Um, and if you have somehow lost your city census, you can come to the city clerk's office and we will certainly uh, be able to give you another one. Uh, uh, so one important thing that I think uh, that I'd like to sort of get the message out is that responding to the census keeps you active on the voter rolls. Um, we're required by law if you don't respond to the city census, letting us know that you are here as of January 1st of the current year, that we make you an inactive voter. And so even though you may have voted in the last election, um, seems kind of redundant, but uh, today's laws require that we make you inactive and that can certainly um, prevent you from having a timely check out, check in and check out at the polls. So. Um, the second thing is that it's dog licensing season and dogs six months and older do need to be licensed. Um, you can mail your dog license information to us, um, to the city clerk's office, 210 Main Street, room four, with a zip, of course, of 01060. We ask that you be sure to include your pertinent pet information and your veterinary paperwork showing the current rabies and proof of spared or neutered if in fact your pet has uh, been spayed or neutered. Um, and if your pet's uh, rabies has expired, we invite you to come on April 27th uh, to Smith Vocational where there will be a rabies clinic. Um, it's $15 to get your pet vaccinated. Uh, and um, if you need a three year vaccine, then we ask that you bring proof of previous vaccination. We will also be there to uh, license dogs um, if it makes it more convenient for people to vaccinate and license at the same time. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Clerk Powers. I appreciate those public service announcements for sure. Um, and now I will turn to, and you'll forgive me any mispronunciations or mangling of your name, um, uh, or if I can't read it, Andrea uh, Egito. Tell us your name, and the floor is yours. And, um, okay. Good evening. I'm Andrea Egito. <clears throat> I live in Florence, and I teach kindergarten at Ryan Road Elementary School. And I am the Unit A Chapter Coordinator of the Northampton Association of School Employees. I would like to thank all the counselors who took the time to explain the budget process 
to the many concerned citizens that have contacted you. Thank you for listening. You may be wondering why we are coming to you at this juncture, and I'd like to explain. NACE sent a request to bargain with the school committee on September 25th. We did not hear from them until late January, and our first meeting wasn't scheduled until February 27th. The superintendent presented his first view budget on February 28th. His preliminary budget was already created before we had had our first meeting. I'm not sure exactly who comes up with the magic number for budget allocation, but what I do know from each negotiation is once that magic number is set, no one on the school committee will ask to change it. We wanted to negotiate with the school committee in the fall so that the proper allocation could be requested. They dragged their feet and ignored our request for five months. This is so disrespectful to our employees and dismissive of the negotiation process. This is why we are coming to you. We are asking that you are respect our school employees and reject this budget when the time comes. Our teachers have received an average yearly increase of 1.08% over the last 10 years. Our salaries have fallen farther and farther behind and we are suffering. We have sacrificed time and time again for this city that we love. Taking tiny wage increases or none at all. Joining the GIC, which saved the city thousands, but increased our deductibles and co-pays. Our salaries have dropped to the bottom of comparable districts in the state, and we are losing our young teachers to higher paying districts. 80% of our award-winning new teachers have left the district, to, and, it, um, and it's hard to hire talented teachers once they see our pay scale. If our school district doesn't maintain the quality reputa reputation, then this city will suffer. Property values will drop and new growth revenue will disappear. The time is now. Our employees are saying no more. We tried to neg negotiate our contract way before budget season, but were ignored. The school committee unanimously approved a budget that didn't include a fair wage increase after listening to over three hours of testimony from parents, teachers, and support staff. If you haven't already heard the public comment periods from March 28th and April 11th, you really should listen to them. They searched the budget for funds to be freed up as best they could, but no one on that committee publicly said to the mayor or the superintendent, we need more to pay our employees what they deserve. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, to relinquish the podium because uh, the three minutes well, is okay, up. Because my last three sentences were directed to the mayor and I don't see him here. He's over there. Oh, there you are. I'll have to tell you about it later, Mayor. So thank you very much. And um, <clears throat> so before we go on, I'm going to make a request um, that I usually make. And I, I make it in a very, uh, as respectful way as possible. I ask that we uh, hold both applause and expressions of disapproval. And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> One is that it's going to help everyone be heard in a timely way. And two, it's, I think, something that you would want if you were coming up here on the other side. So that's a request I'll make. Um, uh, and, that's, and we want to balance free speech with just moving things along. So perfect. So now let me go to the next one after making that request of you. Uh, Paula Regano Murray, please. Hello. My name is Paula Regano Murray, and I live at 45 Finch Street in Northampton. I am an ESP at Northampton High School and the ESP chapter co-coordinator. I am here representing the nearly 100 ESPs that work in our public schools. They are physically and emotionally drained from supporting our neediest students on a daily basis. They are exhausted from working two and three jobs to make ends meet. Several are currently on strike at Stop and Shop and hurting from the loss of their additional income. They are underpaid, underappreciated, present company excluded, and underrated. They are well-educated, 
This position requires an associate's degree. And when last surveyed, 60% had a bachelor's degree and 23%, including myself, had a master's degree or higher. They are a bargain by any standard and deserve to be paid their worth. When NACE presented its counterproposal on April 3rd, we asked the school committee to be creative and to think outside the box in considering the, the feasibility of our proposal. They did not. When the mayor spoke, he mentioned an override at least six to eight times during his short speech. My property taxes in the city of Northampton increased $651 in 2019. The initial proposal by the school committee saw my annual pay increasing by only $228. An override is unnecessary and counterproductive to keeping school employees as residents of this great city. Every year, teachers and countless school employees do not get fair wage increases. And when they ask for them, they are threatened with an override. And I say threatened because as a union, we believe this is a tactic employed by the city to keep our men members from demanding their worth. We don't want to put an added burden, added burden on our students' families, and the city banks on this. So now I ask the mayor to get creative. You joked about pot for potholes, yet every year they seem to get filled without funding from recreational marijuana taxes. School employees, on the other hand, do not get the significant wage increases they deserve. Teachers have averaged 1.08% over the past 10 years. We recognize that the first quarterly payment of $731,000 is not what every quarterly payment will be. But make no mistake, we will continue to get significant tax monies from these retail shops in our community. Smith College, maybe it's time. Time for them to pay property taxes on the non-educational buildings they own. MIT does, Harvard does. We offer their education students the opportunity to teach in our schools, and it is wonderful that they offer our students free college classes while in high school, but this affects approximately 100 to 140 students a year. There are 2,500 students in our district. Get creative, Northampton. And Mayor, I agree, we need to replenish the city's fiscal stability fund, but only after the city school employees are paid enough to establish their own. I work with some of the most talented, hardworking people I have ever known. Morale in our city schools is at an all-time low. I hear great teachers talking about leaving now that their kids have grown. We cannot let this happen. City Council, I know you are not voting tonight, but I implore you not to appro approve a budget when the time comes if it does not include fair and equitable pay raises for the teachers, associate administrators, educational support professionals, clerical cafeteria, and custodial workers who make up this great school district. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marianne Lockwood. I announced the next person, but I don't think I was heard. Marianne Lockwood. Welcome. Good evening to you all. My name is Marianne Lockwood. I am a six year employee of the Northampton High School, I'm a special education teacher there and I've been an educator in Massachusetts for over 20 years. I'd like to take this opportunity to refresh our collective memory of what occurred just a little over four years ago at the meeting of the Northampton City Council. Once upon a time in the City Council meeting in February 2015, its members elected in a six to three vote to increase their stipends and those of school council members, a move that was long overdue. In fact, the pay rate of those part-time positions had not been touched in 25 years. Imagine that, 25 years. According to a Daily Hampshire Gazette article from February 2015, then Vice President Jesse Adams noted, if the council had received any cost of adjustment raises during that time, we'd be right around $9,000. So the council made what I hope we all agree was the correct decision. They decided to raise stipends so that they were on par with the rise of inflation. This, in effect, almost doubled some council members' stipends and doubled the stipends of all school committee members who were earning $2,500 per year at that time and were raised to $5,000. The city clerk and the mayor also received raises at that time. According to the Hampshire Gazette article, Vice President Adams noted <coughs> that the rationale for the pay increases for the mayor and the town clerk was to ensure that the positions attract qualified candidates. And that same process should be used for part-time public servants. Let me repeat that. 
The rationale for the pay increases for those full-time elected officials was to ensure that the positions attract qualified candidates. The City Council felt that higher pay would attract better employees to our city. I couldn't agree more. I would add that offering higher salaries also helps to retain the ones that you want to keep. I suppose that the council didn't want to endorse that as they were voting for an increase in their own pay. In fact, about half the people who are currently on the council were present for that vote. Now, I'm not knocking these stipend increases. I agree that people should get raises in pay that correspond to the cost of living adjustment. But what I fail to understand is how the members of the school committee who benefited from this decision have consistently refused to consider the same treatment for our union members. Yeah. Council members, it is your turn now. I ask you for a happy ending to our story. I ask you to think carefully about how a vote against paying NACE members what they deserve will look in light of your own recent decisions. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alex Jarrett. Alex. Uh, Alex Jarrett, 8th High Street, Florence. Um, I wanted to talk about two things. The first um, is a story. I have a friend who's a teacher in East Hampton within walking distance of Northampton High School. And um, she was uh, thinking how great it would be if she could move, uh, switch her job, and a job was opening up at Northampton High. And so she was looking into that position and um, realized that she would have to take a pretty significant pay cut uh, in order to actually live in, um, or live and work in Northampton. So, um, she decided not to do that, and you know she's a 20-year uh, teacher, very qualified. So my point is we, that there is direct harm being caused um, in that we are losing qualified candidates who might otherwise work here. Um, and I know that it's a tricky situation. There's the state funding has been decreasing, and there's a very much a we're. <clears throat> kind of being pitted against each other here. Um, but I ask you to look and ask the mayor as well to look and find more um, because they deserve that. The second um, is about Downtown Sounds. I just stopped in over at the APE Gallery where Downtown Sounds is having a um, fundraising event. Um, so Downtown Sounds is converting from a single owner to a worker co-op. And um, Joe Blumenthal is retiring after many, many years. And um, so this is very exciting for me as a, I, I work in a worker co-op, the Pedal People Cooperative. And um, it's very exciting to see more uh, employee ownership opportunities coming to the city. Um, employee ownership adds <coughs> this level of commitment that you have as a worker to know that you also own it and you also decide how much you can afford to pay yourself, which is not always as much as you would like. Um, <clears throat> and so there is, there's a wave of baby boomers that are retiring and looking to sell their businesses um, or pass them on, but often that there's no one to take them. Um, <clears throat> so there's a, and current employees of a business often have um, a great amount of expertise in the uh, in how to run the business, so they're they're the ideal people often to take on a business. Um, there are resources right here in Northampton to help with these transitions: the Valley Alliance of Worker Co-ops, the ICA Group, the Cooperative Fund of New England, and there's also a national organization, the Democracy at Work Institute. So cities um, around the country have <coughs> are actually putting resources into seeing this happen. So I encourage Northampton to look into, into that, that opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Susan Voss, please. Hi, good evening. My name is Susan Voss and I live at 89 Ridgewood Terrace in Northampton. And while I am an elected member of the school committee, tonight I'm here representing myself, some of my constituents, and not the school committee. I also want to state that my comments are general and do not apply to any specifics whatsoever of ongoing collective bargaining. I'm convinced that we, the collective community of Northampton, is the we I'm talking about, must work together and commit to paying our teachers and, an, and our entire educational support staff 
at a level commensurate with both surrounding communities and the local costs of living in Northampton. We are behind on this commitment and is going to take creative thinking and sacrifices to bring us in line with where we need to be. It is well known that the state and federal governments are not contributing their share to our budget, but we cannot wait any longer on the backs of our educators to fix this situation. Numerous people have asked me, why do salaries in Northampton lag those in most other communities? In fact, before I ran for school committee, I asked the same question to the mayor and the superintendent. I've studied all sorts of numbers. I still don't have a definite answer or a definitive answer other than to say it's complicated and there is not a single answer to this question. However, tonight I'm going to offer one piece of the puzzle. As you know, the state has an outdated formula that takes a dollar amount for the education spending in order to qualify for state aid. This formula underestimates the true costs for all cities and towns. This is why Northampton contributes more than the required amount to the school system. Using the most recent numbers available on the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website from 2016, Northampton spent 116% of the required amount. And while that sounds generous, in fact, many local communities spend far more than 116% of the required amount on their schools, with at least eight local communities spending more than 125% of the required amount. I urge you to determine how to increase the school budget in a substantial manner. Some important questions would include, one, can more money come out of the current city budget? Two, do we need a robust review of where Northampton's resources are and a determination of what Northampton can afford? Three, is it possible to reduce the amount of money in our capital improvement budget and transfer it to a more immediate and pressing needs? And four, if Northampton can't find money, then we need to ask our community, what are we willing to do? Is there simply not enough money to pay our educators appropriately? Oh, sorry, if there, is not sim if there is simply not enough money to pay our educators appropriately, then elected leaders need to state that and tell the community that through all of our calculations, we cannot meet these needs without a substantial influx of money, such as an override or some other creative solution to this. In closing, I just want to say my kids have received an outstanding education in this community due to the teachers here. And I want the teachers to be supported, and I want future kids growing up in this community to have the same experience my own kids had. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Pamela Schwartz. Ms. Schwartz. Good evening, counselors. Uh, my name is Pamela Schwartz. I live at 22 Columbus Avenue. Um, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and say, first of all, thank you for your service. Um, I know you have a difficult job and um, you are here to receive the community's needs and to do what it is you can to respond to them. And, and what I want to say about what you can to respond to them, I guess I'm here asking for us to have a shared starting point that we need to raise teacher pay, period. And if we can all come together on that without entering collective bargaining, that's, I'm not suggesting we're around the negotiation table, but that we're all messaging that together. Every elected official on every level in this city is saying this has to happen. We are going to find a way. We take some of the air out of the tent, the, the us and them, which I actually think is on balance quite artificial. Um, I suspect every single person around this table would like to see te teacher pay go up. So the question is, how do we do it? And how do we do it when we are losing 3.5 billion since the late 1990s and early 2000 income tax cuts on the state level? We have been starved as a community. We are here clawing each other. And I just, I, I'm asking you to fill the vacuum of messaging, we're hearing from the, 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 the teachers need their pay, the teachers need their pay, and we're and so many, and we all agree on that. But I'd love for you, as leaders, to come out strong on that and say we're in this together, and we're going to problem solve this, whatever it takes. And we've got these public thank, thanks to the mayor, we've got these hearings, these uh, town halls. They're not hearings; they're town halls coming up next week. I want to make sure everybody's on everybody's radar screen. We've got um, two, wait, the 23rd. And is that right? Tuesday the 23rd, if I got it right? Um, 24th. And, the, um, and Tuesday at Leeds? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Tuesday at Leeds at 7 p.m., Leeds School. 
Um, Wednesday the 24th at 7 p.m. at JFK and Monday the 29th at Northampton Senior Center at 7 p.m. This is our chance to have these questions answered. These, all, what are we doing with the pot money? What are we doing with, um, what, are, what are our obligations? What, where, where do we have any fudge room for the capital improvement budget? I, I don't know the answers to that. We all have this opportunity, thanks to our mayor, to get educated and I'm looking to have that opportunity so that we can come together and figure this out. But if we can have all of you join all of us, so there is no us them, and we're out there, you're out there going, we are going to fix this. We are committed to making this happen. That will be to the better of our community and will make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Janice Toddy. Floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Janice Toddy. I live at 29 Fort Street. I'm a 36-year resident of Northampton. I'm here as a citizen who cares deeply about my city. I also have another name, and that is Ms. Toddy. I teach at Jackson Street Elementary School. I love my work, so I'm also here as a school department employee and a member of NACE. I come to the microphone with appreciation for the difficulty of the situation we're faced with and with respect for all. I spoke at the school committee last week and I held up this piece of paper and I said this is the approximate size of the washboard my grandmother cleaned laundry for a family of six on in North Cambridge, Massachusetts. I spoke about how I am one generation removed from serious poverty. In that regard, I am no different from most of the world. Most of the world lives in poverty and most people are not, if, if they're not in poverty, they're not too far away from that. But I'm gonna use this tonight to represent my paycheck. This is a year with no raise. And this is a year with no cost of living adjustment. And this is another year with no raise. And my paycheck is getting smaller and smaller. And across from me now in this room stands my retirement. It used to be this vague idea, and now it's in the room with me, and I can see it. And it's not really close, but it's getting closer. And I'm not unique also in being concerned about my future. Everybody deals with uncertainty, with worry about how we're going to take care of ourselves as we get older. Um, but I'm well aware that there are many people in Northampton Public Schools who make far less than me. I'm a teacher. And even though I'm paid less than other districts, and that is really bothering me, I'm aware that there are people who are paid less than minimum wage in our district. There are people who get a quarter, a quarter, a 25 cent adjustment for working with very, very challenging situations. I want to clarify some things. I want to say that no one in our public schools union is looking for a salary adjustment for anyone else. We've been comparing ourselves to what parking people make, what other people make in our city. We're not looking for that. Our comments are not personal. They come from years of frustration about low and stagnant pay. If people sound angry, harsh, or loud to you, please ask yourself if you've ever lived paycheck to paycheck, because a significant population who work in our schools do. And really, really, I'm asking you to really think about that. I've heard people in this city who I know have great privilege joke about being broke. And I ask people to think, what does that word mean? And are you actually broke? A, a majority of our school employees uh, use she, her pronouns. We identify as female. Women are often told to be silent. We're told we're too irrational. We're told, you know, if we're angry. Um, it, it's, I, I understand why we're being asked to not clap. I also know that that's hard for some people in this room. I also know that people who make less money, often what gets said about them is they're too harsh, they're too loud, they're too angry, they don't use the right language. It's hard for us to hear. I'm asking for our city to think about the difference between our intention as a city and our impact as a city. This workplace wellness program, oh, I'm out of time. Hey, go right. ahead and finish your thoughts, please. Uh, this talks about how much we care about people. And we're not feeling that in, in, in work, the people working in the schools. Um, years ago, we took furlough days as one of our things that we tried to do to help us not have cuts in the schools. It affected different ones, of, different ones of us in different ways. I'm wondering today, I've been thinking about this all day, did the mayor at our time take a furlough? Did, you know, take furlough days with us? Did school administrators take furlough days with us? I don't know the answers to those questions. Those are important questions to me. We have the backbone as a union to stand together now. We don't have the stomach anymore to tolerate these financial conditions, and we hope that you will stand with us. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I, I will note that you'll notice I haven't told anyone to stop clapping. I've just made a request 
Thank you. It's beginning. So thank you for those who have honored that. And for those who don't, you have your reasons. So um, I'm going to go. Now, I, God, I can't read this. Jeez. Uh, so you forgive me. I think it's Suzanne Straws. OK, so you can correct me. The floor is yours. Uh, my name is Suzanne Strauss. I live at 809 Ryan Road in Florence. Um, a lot of people have said a lot of important things. I echo and support what they've said. But I want to say that I feel compelled, compelled to speak here today for a number of reasons. <laughs> I also have spoken at the school committee re uh, recently. First, I'm outraged. Um, I find our salaries outrageously low. Second, I've been working as a teacher for over 20 years here, almost 30 years altogether, and I feel I have an obligation to do so, to, to um, lose historical memory seems to be what people who say no a lot prefer. I'm here to pay it forward. I do not want silence to mean that things are okay. I am so proud to be a member of a working community of bright, well-educated, thoughtful, creative, caring, and articulate professionals. One of the things that has struck me over the last month in the school committee meetings where people have given testimony of their lives is the decency and honesty of their stories. I feel terrible when I leave the meetings. When I hear the struggles of my colleagues and the insensitivity and inflexibility of the people in power to exercise their right, your right, to institute change by increasing the school budget and doing the right thing, it's very, very disheartening. It is possible to be blinded by the percentage increase our union is asking for. But let me offer some per historical perspective. What we've asked for is going to get us to the low end of acceptable of our state average in salaries. What we should ask for is probably close to double of what we're asking for to get to the state average. So I think we're giving a modest proposal, frankly. I think it's time to acknowledge the historical sexism, as Janice Toddy did at work here. And I don't need to say any more because she did. Let me tell you about my day. I was paid today. After paying my excise tax to the city, my state tax bill, my phone bill, my electric bill, and my homeowners and car insurance, I was left with $300 for the next two weeks. So that's what I've got to provide for a family of five, including a one-year-old grandchild who lives with me. And that's after 28 years of teaching, 21 at Northampton High School. Over the past five or six years, my spouse's work dried up, and he has faced ageism on the job market. So I have been the primary wage earner in my family. Every month, we dig into savings to pay our bills. You know what my outrageous raise of $600 for the last year buys after 21 years in this district? Nothing. That's what it buys. I've had a net loss in pay just about every year since 1998. If I were still teaching in the district I came here from in Eastern Massachusetts, I'd be making about $30,000 more annually. Over the course of 30 years, that's pushing a million dollars. I'd call that a significant difference. I live here, I work here, I enjoy living here, I enjoy working here. But I'll tell you this, people in our community are fired up to help us get a living wage, and people in our union are ready for civil disobedience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, uh, Suzanne Stillinger, please. Hi, Hi. thank you so much. Um, I am not a public school teacher. I'm here as a citizen of Northampton. I am an early childhood teacher and not a public speaker. I was hoping to see Gina Louise here because both of her daughters came through my preschool. One of the reasons I know Gina Louise chose our preschools because we value teachers and we pay teachers a living wage. That living wage makes Northampton barely affordable for me. I lived in Northampton as a child when BART's was still on Main Street and Main Street Records was still a thing. And I left uh, for high school, college. I lived in Brooklyn and Boston. But I found my way back here. And one of the reasons that I returned to Northampton was to finish my degree at Smith. And I stayed after graduating as an ADA because Northampton is a place that really strives to live its values in a way that many other places I have lived do not. I really appreciate that about this city. My daughter, Helena, is um, enrolled in Bridge Street to start in kindergarten in the fall. I really value public school. I really value the teachers and other staff people there. And I'm shaking because I'm so upset 
to think that I, my tax dollars may not be supporting my values. This is really, really important to me as a resident of Northampton that, that the schools and the teacher pay reflect my values as a parent of a child in these schools. Because if it doesn't, it sends a very clear message that sound, feels very simple to me. We do not value teachers enough to pay them enough to live in this community. We do not value the children in our community. It's very, very simple. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, is it is it May uh, uh, Cowie? Cowie? May. I think I got both names wrong. So, but welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Cowie. I live at 29 Laurel Park, and I've been teaching at Jackson Street School for the last 22 years. Um, this isn't a news flash, but Northampton is a union town. Um, I was on King Street for an hour with striking stop and shop workers this afternoon. Hundreds of people honked their support, and not a single person gave us the finger. <laughs> <laughs> and we were out here tonight, and again, really strong support from the community for our public schools and for the Northampton Association of School Employees. In the 22 years that I've worked here, the city has always said there's no money. For 22 years, we've been told there's no money. We've had contracts where we've got been offered, or we've settled for like zero, zero, point five. Pathetic. We've had years where we've had furlough days where we've worked without pay and we were told it was a good deal because it wouldn't lower our base. It was better than a cut. We've taken it, we've taken it, we've taken it. And that's how we've gotten to be in this position where teachers in Northampton make $17,000 on average less than the state average teacher salary. And I'm a math specialist. I have a lot of expertise in teaching first, second, and third graders to count forward, count backward, add, subtract. I'm not a budget geek, OK? That's what we expect city council, our school committee members, our city administration to help us with. Sometimes people say to me, well, how should they fix it? I'm coming to you asking you to help us fix it. I am trusting that you, like your constituents, support labor, and that you, like your constituents, support public education, and that you, like your constituents, like the hours and hours and hours of public testimony we've hear, heard, heard at school committee, the hundreds of people who have rallied in support of the Northampton Association of School Employees again and again and again, all of the letters in letters to the editor in the Gazette that are supporting a fair contract for school employees. I trust that you're hearing that, that you're hearing your constituents, and really we're to the point of problem solving. And that's what we're here to ask you to do. We are seeing increased streams of revenue. We don't know exactly where the money is going. We know one thing. It's not coming to school employees. That's why we have food service workers who are still making below the minimum wage. We have custodians who start one cent above the minimum wage. It's not okay for any of us. And it's not okay for city employees to be pitted against each other. So we are not going to accept the idea that if you want a wage increase, you've got to take it from the custodians and the clerical. No, we're not going to be pitted against each other. Thank we need you. you to help us solve this problem. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Um, now I see Anne, and then I think I see a letter F. Yes, my name is Anne Fine. I live at 25 Monroe Street. And I'm here because um, my children, who are now 29 and 26, benefited from Northampton schools. I also think because um, I'm a nurse, I feel that and it's come up in this room that a lot of this is also a feminist and social justice issue, that we expect women to care 
for those vulnerable in our society, and yet we expect them or are surprised when they finally say to do this work well and to live in the community want, that we want to live in, well, we have to be able to afford to live here. So always the question is, what do we value as a community and what makes a community desirable? We know good schools are at the top of the list. It is time to pay teachers and support staff what they are worth and for Northampton not to shortchange those charged with educating our children. Public education must um, stay a priority if we value a democracy and not fuel the social and economic divide. So we also know that the reality is there are many people who live in Northampton who have the choice to leave the school system and that they will because they have the resources. But I feel like you all are charged with saying that we want to take care of our whole community. And so I thank you for pushing and pushing farther and what wasn't addressed in a timely way by the school committee that you take up that charge. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So that takes care of the sheet. Um, I but, up, but you didn't call my name. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, do we have another sign-up sheet? That would explain it. Oh, no. You know what? You're 100% correct. I'm wrong. Please. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Kira Henninger. I live in East Hampton, and I'm the school psychologist at Leeds Elementary School. It is my experience that Northampton educators are selfless, caring, and dedicated professionals. I feel privileged and honored to work among them. We sacrifice our time and money to meet the needs of students. Educators are natural caregivers. It is our instinct to help those in need, even if that means putting the needs of others ahead of ourselves. Over the years, educators have continually put off getting a raise for the benefit of others. The city of Northampton needs to stop relying on educators to self-sacrifice. Educators should not have to choose between an adequate salary and ensuring appropriate staffing to meet the needs of students. This is not an either or situation, we need both. An average raise of 1.08% over the last 10 years is embarrassing and demoralizing. As a school psychologist, I use data to inform decisions. I'd like to share some data with you. Northampton police officers make $34 less than the state average. Northampton firefighters make $3,200 less than the state average. However, Northampton teachers make nearly $17,000 less than the state average. I question the inequity here. Additionally, the city of Northampton's budget has been increasing nearly 3% a year, while the average teacher salary is increasing at a much lower rate than both that and inflation. Therefore, each year, Northampton educators can afford less on their salary. The last three years, we received increases of 0, 1, and 1.2% a total of 2.25%. Both Northampton police and firefighters received increases totaling 4.5% over the last three years, which is also low, but still more than double that of educators. Finally, eight out of 10 previous early career Grinspoon Award winners have left our district for more competitive salaries. I asked the members of the city council and mayor, do you really value education in your community? As educators, we value the addition of staff to support students, but it should not be borne on the backs of the existing staff by failing to provide us with adequate pay. I encourage you to think about this data and use it to inform your decisions. In order, in order to maintain a quality school system for our children and community, competitive salaries need to be provided to continue to attract highly qualified educators. If you truly value education, you will advocate for the dedicated high quality educators of NPS and provide us with the pay that we deserve. Please do not pass a budget without allocating funds for a fair and respectful contract for all NPS educators and all employees of the city schools. Thank you. Thank you. So, would anyone else like to speak? Or anyone I missed, or please. Hi, my name is Sherilyn Strader. I live in Marion Lombardus District at 209 Glendale Road, and I'm also a senior at Northampton High School. And sitting in this room has been 
a really interesting experience tonight because as I look around this room, I see my uh, kindergarten teacher and some teachers that I have this year. I'd sat next to my English teacher actually. And as I felt tonight, it was really hard to take in because when I would go into their rooms, I could get any amount of support that I needed from them. If I had a hard day, I could talk to them about how I felt, but what they're coming to you to talk about tonight is how they feel. They are struggling because they're not getting the wages they deserve. And it's hard to listen to as a student who doesn't hear how they're feeling. They're just coming to tell me about history or math or teaching me grammar. Um, so I'm here to ask you tonight to give them the support they need so they can continue to support students like me. Thank you very much for those comments. Thank you. <laughs> anyone else? Would anyone else like to speak? Please. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. My name is Barbara Madaloni, 30 Dickinson Street, Northampton. Uh, former uh, employee of Northampton, taught in Northampton Public Schools. Um, and I hadn't planned on speaking tonight because I've been to the school committee meetings and I'm so moved uh, by how articulate our educators are and the variety of ways that they know how to express themselves. Um, and like, what, what else do you need to know about uh, Northampton Public Schools and the educators uh, who are raising our young people, uh, except the former speaker? But um, I want to talk a little bit about outrage. Uh, because you asked why people would keep applauding, uh, and, and I'm one of the ones who kept doing that, uh, because I'm outraged. Uh, these educators every day are actually asked to be silent in many more ways than just about their salaries. Uh, they're asked to be silent about what quality education looks like mm -hmm. yeah. when we have high stakes testing and teacher evaluation systems that are choking their capacity to live to their incredible possibility as educators. And so to walk into a room where we are here to speak and to speak a necessary outrage uh, and then to be told again to be silent, I just think it's important that we continue to push back against that, to really keep pushing back and keep raising our voices because we have to be heard and, and, and what, what we've been asked to live with has to stop. It just has to, and, and leaders, our leaders, the mayor, it's up to you to take this up and commit to and resolve this now. Not to ask us to be polite, and I, I love the speakers, but you're too damn polite. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to be impolite <clears throat> in the sense to make people uncomfortable and to not accept that there's not a way to do this. There's a way to do this, and it's up to you to find the way to do that. It's up to the school committee to find the way to do that, and we're not going to keep quiet until that happens. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, before I ask if there is anyone else, I will reiterate my policy, because it's important to me personally that you understand my position. I have not asked anyone to be silent, nor will I, nor will anyone on the city council. It's, it is true. I, I made a request about what we normally do, and I haven't changed anyone's um, actions or challenged anyone's actions. That will continue to be my policy. Everyone is heard when they come to the city council, and I think everyone has been. And so having said that, uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Sure. Yeah, please. Okay. And then you. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be polite. I don't have anything written. I'm Dinah Mack. I've been teaching at JFK for 14 years, and I wrote to all of you, and I really appreciate you accepting um, opinions, and I know that you couldn't write back as a reply all, and I thank you, um, Bill Dwight, for that response on Facebook. Um, I don't have anything written, so I'm, I'm just going to say very quickly that two of my favorite teachers are leaving JFK this year, that I just found out this week. A very close colleague of, my, of mine at JFK took $10,000 pay cut last year to work at JFK. He does not want to stay 
at JFK anymore. Um, I spent part of my afternoon looking up what teachers can do in regard to civil disobedience because as you just heard, in my contracts, I've taken zero, zero, half a percent, 1.3. One year, I got 3%, one year out of 14. I have not had a raise in 10 years. I'm at a step 11, which is done. I thought I was going to get more steps. A couple years ago, someone said, oh, no, there are no more steps. I was waiting for the raise. I was like, when am I going to get that raise? Because there were years where we never got a step. And then they took the steps out. So I'm stepped out. I make m less money now than I did eight years ago. Okay, mm -hmm. Suzanne Strauss explained her bill paying today. Mm -hmm. All of us could say the same thing. Mm -hmm. So today I was like, what can we do? I'm looking up striking laws. How can we shut these schools down? Okay, <laughs> I have never been an active member of this union because I did not really believe in the way our leadership was working. I sided with the city for years. I gave days of pay to the city to help when there was fiscal problems. I worked for free. Um, I personally am done with that. Okay, so I really, I'm asking all of you to figure it out. Okay, because I love my job. I love the schools. I would never have stayed in Northampton. I'm a Grinspoon winner my second year. Right? Someone just said they've all left. Part of me is like, why didn't I leave? I was offered a job five years ago at Hampshire Regional, where I'd be making $10,000 more a year. I kicked myself. Why was I so loyal to the city? Okay, so I'm really asking you all to dig deep, ask the mayor to add the money that is needed for this budget so that our union does not have to do civil disobedience, because we will. And I'm telling you, I've never felt, I've never, I have never felt this much energy from this union. Okay, it is, people are done. And when we say we're not gonna take it anymore, we're singing outside like there is not a person I've spoken to who is not at the end of waiting. Like we really are done. We are really saying no more. You got to figure it out. And so thank you for any work you do to figure it out. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're next, won't you? Didn't you have your hand up? Okay. That's very generous of you. And then you. <laughs> So, well. uh, I also uh, didn't have anything prepared, so I'm going to read a speech that I made at the school community meeting. My name is Sarah Simmons. I live on 78 Lyman Road. Um, I grew up in Northampton. Um, my mom was a school community member for 13 years. I was always very proud of that. My grandmother owned a little mom and pop store on South Street, which she ran for over 50 years. Um, so um, I want to tell you what it looks like to have my salary. So, and I'm a proud teacher a fourth grade at Ryan Road School and lucky enough to be one of Sherilyn's teachers. Um, so in any case, not this Tuesday, but last Tuesday, um, my husband woke up at 4 a.m. in severe pain and we didn't know what was happening. Um, and my students had MCAS that day. So my children that I teach are nine and 10 years old and I made the decision to allow my husband in pain to drive himself to the emergency room. Um, so that I could be in my classroom because that's what we do as teachers. I didn't want the nine and ten year olds to be scared and by themselves so I had to choose between my adult partner and my nine and ten year old students. My first thought was would you be okay and my next thought, my very next thought, was how are we going to pay the $100 emergency room copay and our water and sewer bill this month. That's what it's like to be a teacher in this town. As I'm driving into school, I'm wondering, how am I going to pay the co-pays? He hasn't met his deductible yet. What that, what's that going to look like? Are we going to be able to pay our HELOC loan this month? Because I'm also trying to put my wonderful son through college. And that's what it looks like to be a teacher in this town. My mother, who has served on the school committee for 13 years, would be disgusted. She'd be disgraced. The last thing I'd like to tell you is that my son my son was diagnosed with a learning disability when he was in first grade. And it was because of the teachers in this town that he learned how to read. It was because of the teachers in this town that worked with him for countless hours that he's as successful as he is now. He received an academic scholarship to go to the University of Vermont where he's really successful and he's doing really well. 
I never thought that that would happen. And that happened all because of the teachers that you have in this town. And we're leaving. We can't do it anymore. I was researching what teachers do when they can't teach anymore just today. I love teaching. I love teaching. And I love teaching in the town that I grew up in. I take so much pride in it. But I don't take any pride when I can't pay my bills. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Erica Karen. I live in Hatfield. I cannot afford to live in Northampton. Uh, I is my first year teaching at JFK. I'm the new choral director. Um, this is my dream job. This is my dream job, 100%. I started teaching in Eastern Massachusetts in a level four district elementary school. I loved my students. I it wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach middle school. I wanted to teach chorus. So then I went to Springfield. It made more sense for me to move out closer to my partner than for him to move out closer to me. He's an audio engineer in the area. Um, so I went to Springfield. Hardest job I've ever had. Loved my students, but I was like, 30 years of this, no thanks, can't do this. So I was lucky enough to be offered a position at JFK, which I accepted without hesitation, despite the fact that I am making the same amount of money with a master's degree as a step six as I was with a bachelor's degree at a step two at my first job. Um, I'm not going to talk about salary other than that because that's not my goal here. I'm not going to talk about my bills. I'm not going to talk about my student loans. What I am going to talk about is not a lot of people have talked about student trauma. So I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to start with a quote. I didn't grow up having role models. I grew up having people I didn't want to be like in singing situations I'd never want to be in. Not all of us are dealt the right cards, but that doesn't mean you cannot reshuffle your deck for a better outcome. I was that kid. I went to college. I paid my way in my first generation. I left school for a year to take time off. I wasn't sure if teaching was what I wanted to do because it's so volatile, clearly. I've learned in the last five years teaching that it's volatile. I decided that it was my calling. I really wanted to go back to it. I couch surfed on families' couches, lived in emotionally abusive situations for four years while I got my teaching license and became a teacher. And I am just one of many students whose backgrounds are like that. And in any other job other than public service, when your job gets harder, when you're given more duties, when you're given more things to do, you get more money. You're paid commensurate to your level of work. And I work like 60 hours a week at this job, and I'm making the same amount of money I made in my second year teaching. And the students are getting more challenging. They're having higher needs. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. I do know that I can relate to that because I was that child, and that I want to do everything I can to help them. But it's really hard when you don't know what bills you're going to be able to pay when you're supposed to take 45 eighth graders to New York City and you don't know how your ticket's getting paid for, but theirs are all done. And also just giving those experiences to those students who have that trauma that need that in their lives because they never had it growing up, like myself. So all the teachers in this district care so much and they should be paid commensurate to the amount of extra things they're being asked to do to serve these traumatized students. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Thank you for sharing part of your story. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to speak who has who has not spoken? Please, yes. Hi, I'm Sadie Gold Shapiro. Uh, I live at 28 Summer Street in Northampton. Um, I also didn't prepare notes, so, but Miss Strauss waved me on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about myself. Um, I am a 2012 graduate of the Northampton Public School System, a system I was really proud to go to. I stuck around. I went to Smith College because I love being here, and I really care about our community. Actually, in the mid-2000s, I think I was the student delegate to the school committee or council or something of the sort. So. Um, I really appreciate all the work you do, and I sat through a lot of these meetings myself, um, and I know that a lot of things come to the floor, and I just think this is absolutely fundamental to who we are as a city. Um, I graduated from college in 2016, 
studying history and I wanted to teach and I actually went and looked at positions in the Northampton public school system. I looked to see if I could do substitute teaching and it was absolutely unaffordable for me to do that. And I love the community, I love being here. All of my teachers are sitting here in the audience and I would love to be able to join them but it's just not financially possible. And I think, I mean, I literally can write because of these people. I can speak because of these people. I mean, I am who I am today for this reason. I can't imagine who I would be without them. And I know so many countless people that I've spoken to that did not receive the same kind of public education that I received. And I know that's a privilege. And it's there because of the countless hours of work that these teachers put in. After school, working 60 to 80 hour weeks, I see them in stop and shop at the checkout lines. Not now, because um, <laughs> although I did, I was there also this afternoon and saw a lot of you on the line, so thank you for that too. But um, these people are working one, two, three jobs, and the work that they're doing is work that comes from the heart. And I care so much about what they're doing, and I, yeah, I really can't imagine a city without the public education system that we have, but if we don't make changes, it's just not gonna be what we've, it's not gonna be up to the standard that we've had. And I hope that the teachers will take action. I think it's really critical. I learned how to go on strike in the Northampton public school systems. I learned about the history of civil disobedience, about unions and where they come from. So um, thanks for all those lessons and. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyone else? Would anyone else like to speak? No, you sure? Going once, going twice? Do you want to have like a collective like applause for yourselves? <laughs> applause just you know, because everyone should be able to come and speak to city council, which they are. All right. Thank you very much. So hearing no more public comment, what we're going to do is convene. This, I think, is reasonable. If you're leaving the chambers, please subdue your conversation so that we can conduct our business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, OK, thank you. So uh, I'll ask for a roll of the city council whenever <coughs> we're ready. Councilor Bigwell. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labar. Yes. Yeah. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor Donald. Here. Uh, there are no public hearings this evening. Uh, I have no updates. Are there any one-minute announcements, Councillor Dwight? Um, I know I've fallen in arrears of my updates of uh, the Charter Review Committee, but currently, actually, an important announcement on, on April 30th at JFK Middle School, there will be a forum um, hosted by the Charter Review Committee, and we invite people, and those of you who are leaving the room, you might be interested in this. It's, uh, issues relative to uh, how we do, how we conduct elections, and also possibly the prospect of lowering the voting age in the municipality to 16. And the public's invited to attend and participate in discussion. And 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 I hope that that we have a robust uh, uh, ranked choice voting is also on the on the docket. So I know that holds some interest to people as well. Um, and um, you know, I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to provide more information, but unfortunately, I missed two meetings there as well. I missed two meetings here, missed two meetings there, but uh, I should say that the chair and the, and the co-chair uh, run a really good meeting. And in fact, the, uh, everyone should know that those meetings are public. They're held the first and third Tuesdays in the hearing room. And again, I, I invite the public to come and attend, hear those conversations and discussions about what constitutes essentially our city constitution so but remember put it on your put it on your calendar april april 30th at jfk april 30th and then in addition the first and third uh Tuesday. that's correct okay and then and then the Tuesday? yeah yes this is a special yes. form for that <clears throat> and there will be other forms to follow as we focus on um some of the more uh the bigger the bigger issues that that come up in the, the discussion of uh of our, how our charter works so well, great, thank you. Uh, it was worth waiting for that update. Okay. <laughs> it was a good one. Thank you. Could have done it in a postcards, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Dwight. Um, any other one-minute announcements, Councillor Nash and then Councillor Bidwell? 
Thank you. Um, so this is from uh, Northampton Police Department. Uh, on Saturday, April 20th, 2019, Extravaganza will be held at the Three County Fairground, which is located off of Route 9 in Northampton. Throughout the day, there will be heavy traffic on Route 9 near the fairgrounds and in the downtown area in general. Please allow for extra time if traveling through this area. The event is scheduled from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and one addition I would add, as the chair of the TPC, mm. that um, it, it being 420, that NETA down on Pleasant Street is also expecting a great number of customers. So uh, both major thoroughfares in around Ward 3, which is important to our city, uh, are, are expected to be pretty clogged up. So if you have somewhere to be on Saturday night, such as a Seder or something like that, you might want to plan ahead. Um, and um, that's the announcement. Okay. Thank you. Very helpful. Councilor Bidwell. Uh, yes, I'd like to announce that Hampshire Hope is going to be uh, running two different two community discussions about substance abuse disorder. Uh, they will be providing their opioid overdose training, including how to administer Narcan. Um, they've been doing this in a number of settings, but these are two community forums. The first, May 3rd, from 12 to 1 at the Forbes Library Community Room, and the second, May 14th, from 7 to 8 p.m. at the Hampshire YMCA. Uh, I encourage folks to spread the word about these really important community forums. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, any other one-minute announcements? Mr. Mayor, do you have any communications this evening or well, I, hey, presentations? I announced the town hall budget meeting, but I believe... Uh, you want to do it again because it's so important? So you feel it's covered? I believe it's covered, but... Okay. Sounds good. No, no, no. Great. Thank you. So anyone else? All right. So we have one resolution. Uh, which I will read. Uh, in the City Council, April 18, 2019, upon the recommendation of Councillor Elisa F. Klein, uh, Elisa F. Klein and Councillor James B. Nash, 19047, a resolution amending and, and extending the timeline associated with the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction, whereas the City Council previously approved R190112, quote, a resolution establishing a Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction, end quote, hereafter the original resolution, in accordance with Section 2.6.3 of the Council Rules, and whereas allowing more time for residents to learn about and apply to the committee would be in the public interest. Now, therefore, be resolved that the City Council of Northampton hereby authorizes the Council President to appoint members after the April 18, 2019 date provided in the original resolution, so long as the total membership is not more than the number described in that resolution. The committee shall convene within two weeks of such appointment, and the report of the committee shall be due within five months of such appointment. Where there may be other conflicts between the original resolution and this resolution, the terms of this resolution shall supersede the original. I would ask for a motion to approve the so consent moved. floor and seconded by uh, Councillor Labarge. Um, any discussion on this from the sponsors or any other councillor? Well, I just like to explain why we're inter introducing this. Um, we've uh, we've had a number of people apply. Um, we also have an, a number of people who are still thinking about it. Um, we're at the point where the deadline that we established has passed and that um, we think it would be important just to create a little wiggle room here uh, and it would be up to the council president to determine when that closing date would be uh, but um, that uh, we could uh, form a committee that fully fully meets what the requirements that, of membership that we're looking for um, so that's why this is before you. Thank you. Other discussion? Uh, Councillor Dwight and then Councillor Dwight. Shall, uh, Unless Councillor Dwight wishes to defer yeah, I'll to defer. the sponsor, the Councillor for WhatsApp. I just, thank you. I just wanted to add to what Councillor Nash is saying that uh, one of the goals was to have um, stakeholders that are very um, involved in uh, management of green spaces in the city, um, agriculture, all kinds of things related to um, reducing pesticide use in the city, um, that they uh, have, a f have enough time to apply. And one of the things we discovered is that these organizations, um, you know, they have these mechanisms by which they have to make a decision about who to put forward from an organization. Sometimes they have to have a board meeting first, they have to communicate amongst themselves. 
So um, the short timeline that we had established just didn't give enough time to um, some of the organizations that we think will be very important stakeholders in this work um, to do their internal processes to put forward a candidate. So um, we're just trying to create a little bit more wiggle room, as uh, Councillor Nash said, to make sure that we're having all of the key stakeholders um, relevant to this issue involved. Thank you very much. Councillor Dwight. I, I, actually, that's, I wanted to speak to that in some level because I just recently got a primer on um, special membership status that we had to do in the uh, Charter Review Committee. It turns out I need to have special membership status, which is redundant given the fact that I'm already precluded by state ethics laws from lobbying any other agency or having any other affiliation. But what special membership does allow is participants and committees uh, who might have, there, it gives them a more liberal interpretation and some more flexibility on, on state ethics laws as far as issues of conflict. We run into this in a small community because uh, there's a very strong likelihood that anybody associated with some, associ uh, some affiliated system might have business before uh, the council or any other uh, body in, in the city that might be construed as an ethical conflict. And it creates, it, it, it functionally eliminates some of the most qualified people from, from participating in these um, ad hoc committees. And Counselor? It, so I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I want <clears throat> to be careful not to stray too far into that since that particular item okay. is not no, on I, the agenda. So that was leading sorry. up to a question. So go ahead, it yes. Was, it, it was, in that question was essentially, in, I was just explaining my, my recent understanding of this. So my question is, is this, is it the intent of the sponsors or the president to consider um, special membership status, which would have to be approved by this, this council in order to grant them that flexibility? Um, so I'm trying to think because obviously that particular subject has not, is not on our agenda, but insofar as it relates to an extension, I think an extension would um, allow for that consideration, should that be appropriate. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, the reason I bring it up in relation yeah. to the extension yeah. is there may be people self-disqualifying from applications. Perhaps. Yeah. Without, the, without the understanding of that potential protection. That's a good point. So That's a good point, actually. Thank you. Yes. Um, good. Uh, so we had Councillor Bidwell next. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the wiggle room because I've, I've been in touch with folks who are out there still thinking about it. And so I think it's a very good idea to, to take the time to get the right composition of the, of, the, uh, of the select committee. But I did have a question for the sponsors. Why, why is it left so open-ended as opposed to setting some other date certain that four, six, eight weeks down the road? My experience is in getting people to sign on, sometimes a deadline actually helps as opposed to being, appear to be kind of endlessly open-ended. Just, just, just a question. The question was directed to the sponsor, so either one can certainly respond. I'll try to answer it. So, um, that, so this resolution is trying to work with our first resolution, which empowered the council president to make that decision. And so we don't want to relinquish his um, authority to make that decision here. What we're, we're asking for is the ability, allowing him to move beyond the deadline that we set for set forth in the original resolution. I would just add to that that there, um, uh, the council president as the appointer has the administrative birth to make a decision about when he's ready to make the appointments. Um, so in consultation with the council president, that's how we decided to and we will, we're going to have to put out a final date when we kind of do this, out, this ongoing outreach that we're doing, and we will do that in consultation with the council president. That answers my question. There would at some point be a final date. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's my intention to sort of administratively provide a reasonable date. It seems like it's problematic to have in the resolution. Okay. So, but I agree Fine. Ask with both of you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Certainly. Any other? Oh, Councillor Klein. Um, I uh, would like to make an amendment, actually, to this resolution, which establishes a date of three weeks for convening from the date of the uh, announcement of the appointments. 
um, again, in consultation with my co-sponsor, Councillor Nash, we talked about um, some issues that could come up in reaching a quorum. Uh, two weeks can be short notice for people to be able to make it to a first meeting. And we'd like the entire body to be present at the first meeting. We think that the three weeks will give us a little bit more space um, to find the, the date for the first meeting. So the councilor's amendment is to change the words two weeks to three weeks. That's correct. Right. Does anyone second that amendment? I'll second that. Councilor Bidwell seconds. Any discussion on the amendment? Um, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposing the abstentions. Amendment is approved now to the original resolution. Any further discussion? Okay. I would request. Oh, there you go. Council for Ward 3. I just want to say thank you to the council president for working with us on all of this and also, you know, acknowledge that you've been doing all the work around the application so far and, and that we were expecting as the sponsors to get going on this and right now all the, all of the work is rested on the council president and so we're looking forward to getting going on our, our committee here. Uh, but want to thank him for his work. I appreciate that. Um, also, remain very enthusiastic about the project that both of you initiated. Um, so thank you. Any other discussion this evening? Um, I would request two readings on this to facilitate it if no one has any objections. Um, so we have a motion on the floor for first reading, and we might as well do a roll call. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Move to suspend rules. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the suspension of rules to allow for two readings tonight? Um, if not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Rules are suspended. Move second reading, please. Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Any discussion on this on second reading from anyone? No. Did we miss anyone the first time around? This is your second bite. Okay. Um, so it sounds like we're ready for a roll call then. Yes. 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 Great. Thank you very, very much. Uh, now we will move to the consent agenda, which I will I'll read the items at the request of any one counselor. Uh, we will remove items. Uh, so the consent agenda contains the minutes of March 21st, 2019, and April 4th, 2019. Petitions for annual second, so both those sets of minutes, March 21st and April 4th. Uh, various petitions for annual secondhand dealer licenses. First, Antiques Corner, 21 Loudville Road, Florence, Petitioner Lewis Farrick. Cancer Connection, Thrift Shop, 375 South Street, Petitioner Nancy Case. Cumberland Rare Books of 9 and a half Market Street, uh, Petitioner Jose Baskin. Uh, feeding Tube Records of 221 Pine Street, room 141, petitioner Edward Lee. Uh, we will remove that um, in part because we do not have all the documents for that petitioner. So we're going to remove that. Uh, next, Sassy Pants, vintage and used clothing, 2 Con Street, Unit 2, uh, Kathleen Monolongoski. 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 There you go. Um, Stuart F. Solomon, Antiques, 202 Chestnut Street. Petitioner Stuart F. Solomon. The Vintage Cellar, 11 Bridge Street. Petitioner Daniel J. Egan. Tim's Used Books of 183 Main Street. Petitioner Timothy F. Berry. And then uh, 19046, a petition for junk dealer license, Richard and Sharon Huntley. This is a renewal license for Richard and Sharon Huntley of 254 East Hampton Road. The petitioner is Richard Huntley. Um, and for the record, the uh, petitions for annual secondhand dealer licenses were all part of um, matter 19045. So, I'd, one removal. Yeah, I'd move a approval with a removal. Wow, I couldn't believe I said that. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, the one removal, feeding tube records, is not part of this. And so, it's the motion to approve the consent agenda is made and seconded by Council LaBarge. Um, all those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So it's approved. And unless there's any objection, we just won't do anything with feeding tube because we're not ready to. Right. So by ac acclaim, we're doing nothing on that now. <laughs> uh, so now we will uh, recess for the finance committee chaired by Councilor Murphy. Thanks.
Uh, Laura, would you read the role of finance, please? Yes. Murphy. Here. Present. Who's not here this evening? Uh, first item is approval of the minutes from April 4th. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. And uh, our next item of the evening is the third quarter financial report from uh, Susan Wright, the finance director. So when you're ready, we're ready for you. I sent out um, those reports to you today. I hope that you all have them. Um, I'll um, go through the revenues and expenditures for the general fund and then the revenues and expenditures for the enterprise funds. Um, this is the end of the third quarter, and uh, I actually don't have a lot to say on any of these items. They're all pretty much tracking the way that we anticipated. Um, revenues at the end of the third quarter are um, at 73.7%. Um, that's just about where they were last time, um, last, quarter, last year at this time. Um, all of our revenues seem to be tracking just as I, I said each time. They seem to be pretty much on course for what we thought. Um, in the general fund expenditures, um, I will draw your attention to the one account that is overdrawn, which is snow and ice. Um, I've checked with the DPW. They'll be winding up paying all the bills from um, the winter storms pretty soon. So uh, next meeting, I'll be coming to you with a request to transfer funds from free cash to fill the snow and ice um, account. Looks like we'll probably need um, about, uh, about 150,000 to close that gap. Um, and then in the enterprise funds, uh, revenues are at the third quarter mark are all above 75%, either close to 75% or just slightly above. Um, and then the expenditures in the enterprise funds are um, as we anticipated, the um, percentages in the enterprise fund are not quite as meaningful because we carry a lot of long-term multi-year capital projects. So while the percentages of expended funds may look low, it's because there's multiple capital projects in there that are ongoing over multiple years. In the general fund, we don't tend to, the general fund operating budget doesn't tend to carry those capital projects. They're elsewhere <coughs> in the budget, but in the enterprise funds, those capital projects are within the operating budget. So that's kind of the difference. So that's pretty much it. Any questions for uh, the finance director? Third quarter report? Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be seeing more of you as we enter our budget season here. Yes, we will. Um, and we do have one financial order tonight. Uh, that's 19.044, an order to appropriate $100,000 and reprogram $40,000 of free cash to the Leeds Elementary School parking lot. Order that $100,000 be appropriated from the FY19 General Fund Undesignated Fund Balance to Northampton Public Schools for paving and drainage upgrades to the parking lot at the Leeds Elementary School and further to reprogram $40,000 from the JFK Energy Management System upgrades to the Leeds Elementary School parking lot project. We have a motion to finance. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, questions for Susan on this one? I just want to explain that I actually made an error in the free cash article that you adopted. Um, we ha there were two projects I had cut and paste from a previous one to do this order every year. And I had put in um, the last order, $140,000 for the JFK Energy Management System. It was supposed to be 100. And I missed putting in the Leeds parking lot. I left that off the list, and that was supposed to be 140. So what I'm doing with this order is getting you to appropriate the 100000 for the Leeds parking lot and, and the, the excess forty that I put into the JFK project over. into there. So, so this was all in the capital plan. It was detailed in the capital plan just in cutting and pasting. I usually run a tape, and I must have got a phone call or something because <laughs> I did not run a tape with this. Could have been for me. <laughs> might have been. Might have been so. for me. Um, any questions for finance director on the financial order? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive. One here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Councilor Wright. Just uh, to clarify that this order will override the previous order that, that and and adjust the previous order. It it will by taking the, we'll move the the last order you appropriated 140 to JFK. So right. now you're reprogramming that 40 to a different project. And the hundred will stay there. And the hundred is a which is new which was meant to be there in the first place. Cash. Right. No, I, that part I understood. I just want to make sure that that, that this trumps the previous yes. authorization. Yes. 
Thank you. Very good. Any other questions? I'm hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And uh, that's all the business on our agenda, so a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the first up is 18.235 in order to accept Mass General Law, Chapter 64G, Section 3D, Subsection B, to impose community impact fee on short-term rentals uh, within two and three family <coughs> dwellings. And um, so I'm first reading, so I will read it. Okay. Okay. So, okay, thanks. So where, first of all, before I read it, if the uh, council will let me kind of change up the order a little bit, where was this last? Um, this came to us directly from finance? No, it came from, uh, to us from community resources. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, the solicitor recommended amendments to it. Okay. Yes. So we would have to adopt those amendments in council this evening. Um, the amendments do not look very substantial, so I will read the original and then describe the amendments at the appropriate time. Um, so this is in the City Council, February, back in February uh, 7th, 2019, upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, again, 18235, uh, in order to accept Master General Law, uh, Chapter 64G, Section 3D B to impose community impact fee on short-term rentals with two and within two and three family dwellings. Ordered that whereas <coughs> by virtue of Chapter 337 of the Act of 2018, the legislature amended Chapter 64G of the Massachusetts General Laws by adding Section 3D subsection B, which allows communities that have voted to impose a community impact fee upon the transfer of occupancy of a professionally managed short-term rental unit that is located within the city to impose the community impact fee upon each transfer of occupancy of a short-term rental unit that is located within a two-family or three-family dwelling that includes the operator's primary residence. And whereas by vote of the City Council immediately, uh, yeah, immediately preceding this vote, the Council imposed, uh, voted to impose a community impact fee upon the total amount of rent for each transfer of occupancy of a professionally managed short-term rental unit. And whereas it is in the best interests of the city to impose uh, community impact fees upon the transfer of short-term rental units located within a two-family or three-family dwelling that includes the operator's primary residence and to dedicate such fees to affordable housing projects within the city. Uh, whereas the authorization contained within Section 3DB is a local option requiring the City Council to accept the provisions thereof by majority vote. Um, now there, it says and, but now therefore be it ordered. Uh, that the city council uh, that the city of Northampton accepts the provisions of section 3db of MGL chapter 64g and hereby imposes a 3% community impact fee on the total amount of rent for each transfer of occupancy of a professionally managed unit that is located within the city all community impact fees received pursuant to this order shall be paid to the city monthly by the operator all community impact fees received pursuant to this order shall be dedicated to affordable housing projects within the city. Is there a motion to approve this on first reading, please? Second. Okay, made by Councilor Labarge and seconded by Councilor Dwight. I will offer the solicitor's amendment, um, which is in the second whereas, uh, the words immediately preceding this vote would be struck, and in place of those words, uh, we would insert on April 4th, 2019 such that it would read, whereas by, the, by vote of the City Council on April 4th, 2019, the Council voted to impose a community impact fee, et cetera. And also, um, in the now therefore be it ordered paragraph, the words professionally managed unit would be struck. And in place of that, inserted the following. Short-term rental unit located within a two-family or three-family dwelling that includes the operator's primary residence. Um, acceptance of the amendment. Second. Okay. Um, so actually, I think I made the um, a motion mm -hmm. to amend, and Councilor Dwight seconded it. Um, not that it matters. Okay, Any sorry. discussion on on the Fair amendment? Enough. Everyone understand the amendment, of course, and, and it's written down here. 
Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? So, amendment is approved. Um, and so now back to the order. This is the part two of um, um, just, uh, uh, an effort that, we, that the mayor started um, back in February, as you see. So, Mr. Mayor, do you want to comment on it further? Or? No, I just, you're correct. We decided to wait until part A passed because you can't vote on this one unless you've adopted part A, and that's is reflected. Um, I would just update you that you know, people have asked about um, how this fund would be ultimately spent, and I've actually already um, had some communication with the housing partnership, um, and I've actually asked them to kind of propose a process by which we would um, determine how it would be spent. So I've sort of tasked them with Great. coming up with a recommendation. Um, obviously, I think if the city were the city were doing some kind of an affordable housing project, I think that would be fairly straightforward. But if we're going to solicit, um, you know, applications from the community for projects, then we'd want to come up with some kind of a process. So, um, and I would probably involve the housing partnership in that process because that's kind of their their bailiwick. So, um, they're excited about this. They're excited about the fact that there could be this new potential uh, source of support for affordable housing, and they're going to. Uh, you know, put their heads together and, and come up with a process. Yep. Propose a process. That's excellent to hear. Thank you. Good. Any questions or comments from the council on this? By now, we're all familiar with this. So maybe we're ready to vote on it on first reading. Okay. So roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Dahl. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's approved on first reading. Um, next is 19044 in order to appropriate $100,000 uh, and reprogram $40,000 in free cash, uh, free cash to Leeds Elementary School parking lot. Motion to approve. approve. Second. Made by Councillor Bidwell and seconded by Councillor Dwight. Any discussion on this financial order that you just heard about in the Finance Committee? Okay, sounds like ready for a roll call. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Lavar. Yes. 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 Move to suspend rules. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? Um, all those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Rules are suspended. Uh, move second reading, please. Uh, any discussion on this financial order on second? Uh, then uh, roll call, please. Councillor Lavarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Yes. Okay, that is approved in second reading. We have a number of financial orders which are on second reading, uh, about five, so I'm going to go down them. Uh, 19036, in order to approve purchase of 85 acres, give or take, in, in the Mineral Hills, Rocky Hill, and Beaver Brook Greenways, and to appropriate Community Preservation Act funds for such purpose. Motion to approve this. Move to approve. Made by Councilor LeBarge, seconded by Councilor Klein. Any discussion on this order? Um, roll call. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Oh, step down. Step down. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay. The necessary votes were there. We it's passed. Second reading. So next, 19037, in order to appropriate thirty thousand dollars in community uh, community preservation act funds to Florence National Register uh, Historic District Project. Motion to approve. Yes. Made by Councilor Klein. Second by Councilor Barge. Any discussion? Second reading. Uh, hearing none. I'll ask for a roll call. Yes. Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay. Proven second reading. You know, if you're running for president, they really get you on the, the missed votes. You know, that's even right. if you just like right. wash your hands or something. You've got to live with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, 19, so that's proven second reading, 19.038 in order to appropriate Community Preservation Act funds for Broadbrook Greenway Invasive Plant Control Project. Motion to approve this, please. So moved. Okay, and so made by Councilor Dwight, second by Councilor LaBarge. Any discussion on this on second reading? Hearing none, we will have a roll. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. 
Yes. Counselor Klein. No. Counselor Levar. Yes. Counselor Murphy. Yes. Counselor Nash. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Passes. Uh, now, passed on second reading. So next, 19.041 in order to declare surplus and authorize the sale of the former, the former South Street okay. School. Second. Okay. Discussion on this on second reading. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 It's proven second reading now 19.042 in order to accept gift of bench from Leeds Civic Association. <laughs> Motion to approve this. So moved. Okay. Gift of bench. Gift of bench. <laughs> it sounds good. It's the name of, of my band, actually. Gift <laughs> of bench. <laughs> your band or your first album? <laughs> Both. So it, Both. It was the white album. Yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. <laughs> Did we have a motion on that? Okay. We made him say, you got that. Got a motion. So any discussion about the gift of bench? <laughs> Except to say, thank you. <laughs> for gift of bench. But actually, I, in all sincerity, as I said last time, we appreciate that gift from the Leeds Civic Association. And so. back for the pivotal vote. You're always here to accept, <laughs> accept the gifts. Uh, Councilor Bill, do you have any... Uh, Discussion on the gift of a I love the idea of the bench. Okay. Excellent. You got here just in time. <laughs> Good. Then uh, I would ask for a roll call. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. 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 Approved on second reading. Um, now we have an ordinance which has returned to us. This is 19.011 uh, ordinance relative to bicycle sharing services. Fish it out here. Is it long? It oh gracious! Yeah. 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 Okay, the mayor's here. Um, so um, let's see. It can go on the screen um, whenever you're ready. So go to. Oh, no, this did go to. Uh, yeah, we yeah, those I remember. I didn't see. Yeah. So, um, is there any interest in, in waiving the reading in, in favor of a discussion about this? Or do you want me to read the actual? I, I, I would move that we waive reading. Okay. So, unless there's any objection, this is a printed public document that we can review, and actually, it's more instructive than described. So, uh, <coughs> we have this motion on the floor. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, made and seconded. This is 19.011 Norris relative to bicycle sharing services. Um, so, uh, who should start off the discussion? Uh, the mayor or the chair of legislative matters? Or I mean, I can just sort of in introduce it. I mean, it's it's you're the sponsor, right? Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, yep. This is an effort to try to update our um, our current current ordinances to reflect um, some of the new uh, modes of transportation that are currently on our city uh, streets and bike paths. Uh, most notably, you see references to um, electric assist um, and, and other uh, types of uh, vehicles. And I know that the um, Planning and Sustainability Office wanted to try to update those, clarify those, um, and also get ahead of um, some of the new technologies that are, in some cases, being introduced um, in cities as a big surprise. Uh, you know. <laughs> and so I, so I think, um, we wanted to just make sure that we had a process for being able to control and manage. I'm um, speaking, you know, there are some companies that have begun, you know, dropping scooters off um, uh, in cities and running, you know, these uh, programs. And we just want to make sure that we have a way to kind of manage <coughs> that, particularly in our public way, obviously. Um, but um, so that's the purpose of this ordinance. And you can kind of go through the different sections where uh, the definitions have been laid out. Um, and the processes for, um, you know, what's permitted where and the kinds of permissions that are needed. So it's really just about trying to manage as we get into this uh, new environment. You know, we obviously have the Valley Bike Share bikes out there. Um, and I know other cities are looking at, you know, scooters. And so we just want to make sure that we're staying ahead of all these new transportation modes and, um, and our ordinances are updated to reflect it. 
Thank you very much. So, oh, and, and I'll just speak to the discussion on legislative matters. The the senior planner Carolyn Mission had, had um, explained uh, essentially what the mayor just did, and then also added the fact that in the in the absence, because this technology is moving rather quickly, there's a number of private agencies that um, might be interested in in establishing themselves some of the discussion was concerned whether this was equivalent of spot zoning or protecting one particular program and it is not it is actually the language is designed to at least create rules where there were no rules where they're essentially where we were vulnerable with private agencies as you as the mayor pointed out you see uh, you see in this happen in San Francisco and other places where a scooter company would pop up and there's absolutely no regulations concerning it and the scooters sort of littered the sidewalks and uh, became problematic until they had to retroactively create rules this is a preemptive move to just anticipate and not disallow but to to anticipate potential problems congestion problems abandonment problems and also contractual problems with the city um, and so the that's essentially what the conversation legislative matters focused on and uh it met with approval including the uh amendments that you see before you mm -hmm. uh, did it not also sort of level the playing field exactly. so that that a vendor would need to provide services to diff to all different parts of the city right. so they couldn't favor just downtown and ignore florence or leeds or exactly. somewhere else that they'd have to provide service across the city so that everybody had access right. rather than just cherry pick one neighborhood or another okay. um so can we like just oh councilor nash first please. yeah and i just want to thank um bike and ped for the, most of the it, it additions here came from them and you know not only do they meet at 8 in the morning and it's very sleepy, they, um, they also added in the, the language about the scooters. And also, I think they, that their wording around the, um, the, the service area was very helpful to rather say here's where it should be rather than here's where it's not going to be. And um, so anyway, thank you, Bike and Ped. Councilor yeah. Bidwell. Um, I think this is, this is great. I've seen, I've seen in in austin texas and i've seen in somerville just recently uh what happens when you don't get out in front of this and just let the wild wild west um take charge so i think it's i think it's great i did i did have a couple of really minor questions though um having to it it seems to me that it the the definitions section doesn't always track with the wording later on uh, in the ordinance itself and I just wondered if between now and so I'll, I'll obviously vote for it, but I wondered if between now and second reading, either planning and sustainability or legislative affairs chair or somebody might entertain some sign of kind of cleaning up of, and I'll just give you one example so you know what I'm talking about. Um, in uh, section C service here, there's permits for private programs. Well, as, if I understand it, what is meant by private programs there is what is earlier defined as SMD programs. <laughs> there's just various things where there's language that doesn't follow the definitions. I just think well, a little yeah. clean, for, for the sake of future people yeah. down the road understanding this, I think it. I think that's good. I mean, depending on your definition of fun, this might be fun for me. Um, <laughs> just like run through this section by section because I think we might have different comments. I certainly have some comments as well. Then we could flag them, um, and then we can decide whether to vote on them tonight. Um, and then the public can kind of more fully understand. It won't take that long. Um, so the first major part of this is in Article 1, and that's adding the definition of electric assist scooter. Um, it sounds like we might have a question about the second definition, which existed already about shared mobility devices um, from Councillor Bidwell. So previously, electric assist scooter was not defined, and now it's going to be. Um, the next section, which is going to be 312, Article uh, 5, stopping, standing, and parking, I'd say it's fair to characterize this as it's mainly adding scooters to, but to the word bicycle um, to show where scooters or bicycles are prepared to, are allowed to park or be or go. Fair enough? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I actually did have a... Sure. Uh, 
I, was it intentional that only in Section C, which refers to uh, parking and landscape furniture zone, there was scooters was not added to that section? It was added to every other. I wonder if that was intentional or. It's a good question. I'm I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if you have these answers now, feel free. If not, we can flag them. You're saying where it struck out? No. Okay. In number C, it just refers to bicycles shall not be parked. In every other portion of that section, bicycles and scooters are trees. That's just an example. I don't know. Yeah, if yeah, yeah. I'll have to, that's one I'll have to Yeah, do. I don't know if, you really, if we really want to do all. Okay. I'm, we can do it all here now. Let's, or, let's do it, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I don't have a good answer on that one. That's fine. Um, Good. Pre-existing language that we have about right. not abandoning bikes in those areas. Right. If, right. if you want to add scooters, I don't think it would hurt. Yeah, if I may, I would I would add scooters. I mean, particularly, okay. I mean, you know, yeah, we're I, talking I, about uh, disabled parking zones and things like that, and it seems well, to me yes. that they should not enjoy an exclusionary right in this. Right. I'm imagining it was the intent that it just got overlooked. Well, I hear that <clears throat> as a motion, <clears throat> pardon me, to add in uh, section C of page two, um, uh, slash scooters after the word um, bicycles. bicycles. Right. Bicycles yeah. shall not be. Bicycle, yeah. bicycle slash scooters shall not, yes. et cetera. Yes. Okay, so that motion is made by Councilor Dwight and seconded by Councilor Bidwell. Yeah. Okay, discussion on that amendment? All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. any abstentions? Um, I guess we'll count Councilor Carney is not voting for that, it's, which is it's just a simple amendment. What we did is um, added scooters after bicycles. Thank you. <coughs> Section C. Um, actually, so another question I have, unless anyone else does, is G of the same section. Um, so if a bicycle or scooter parked in accordance with this law um, has one or more defects that are then enumerated, it's, the intention is to tag it and remove it, and it's held by the city for a minimum of 30 days. Uh, so my question is, uh, who, who enforces that? Um, you want to I mean, if you know, and if not, no problem. Yeah. I mean, yeah. typically, the, um, uh, I know, for example, like in Pulaski Park, if a bike has been there for an inordinate amount of time and it's been vandalized or damaged, um, we have a process whereby we'll, again, because it's essentially taking up a spot that someone else can't use, we do have a process whereby the bike can be taken from that um, okay. taken from that rack. So I think that's what they're referring to this. And I think they're just adding um, scooter. I think they hold it for 30 days um, to see if somebody claims it. And, you know, and that's sort of been the process. It's basically to address long-term <laughs> bicycles that yeah. have been chained to a bike rack for a yeah. amount of time, seemingly abandoned. So whether it's the building commissioner or the police department or, or whoever. Or sometimes even planning notices uh -huh. and, and, um, and calls it in, or they get a complaint that there's, a, you know, a bike, a bike rack that's had the same two bikes on it for right. forever. Right, yep. Yeah. Maybe the wheels are gone at that point, exactly. but yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, anything else in that section? Uh, moving to the section vendors, um, any discussion on this? This is already existing. Oh no, it's adding. This is yeah. cheese. I'm a little confused about what the track changes are. Are those the only additions when the track changes appear, or are those amendments? My understanding is that those are the changes that were made by the bicycle and pedestrian subcommittee, and that. The other language actually is all new language. Oh, okay. Right. The whole order is, is um, new. Well, that's the one okay. That just reviewing is not just yeah. adding scooters, it's adding the whole section, is what I understood from Carolyn. Okay. So, have the amendments been duly adopted? Is it Legislative Matters adopt them? Yes. From we, Bike and Ped? Uh, we, we accepted these amendments. Got it. Thank you. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, all right. Um, any questions about? Page three. Um, I have one, service area. This would be <clears throat> permits for private programs. Again, we have that question about if that's the right term. Um, may only be used for systems that operate 
um, and it would be throughout the city's core neighborhoods, including urban residential A, B, and C districts and Florence Center. Like, what are the core neighborhoods? Is that defined somewhere? Like, is, I'm just wondering what that is. Does that appear in the code somewhere? So that's a question for Wayne or something. I think it was, I think it was again, uh, a reference to, um, and it cites the three uh, residential districts and the you know, Florence Center. Um, okay. So I'm assuming it means yeah. not rural areas, right, not right. rural residential areas, uh -huh. not industrial areas. Uh -huh. so I think that's sort of what it's focused on. Um, the core neighborhoods where there's the highest intensity of residences. Uh -huh. so I don't think it was actually a, it's not a term that's in our zoning. I think it was more of a reference to the, what the, the characteristic of those neighborhoods. Uh, I actually think it, 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 rather than including it, it should be saying included. The city's core neighborhoods included in the URABC districts. Okay, Councilor Bidwell, maybe. What was the intent to, if the intent was to include all, uh, everything in URABC and Florence Center, then it should just, I, I think it would be clear if it just were to say so. Throughout the city's core neighborhoods, specifically, URABC and Florence Center. Okay. Otherwise, it leaves some question as to is I, I this isn't really considered a core neighborhood. Someone could. Yeah. Argue. And what about the Central Business District? We, that's a core neighborhood. Well, the original language had said outside the Central <coughs> Business District. Right. And I, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why that was. We're excluding the Central Business. Okay. I'm not sure why that was amended. Okay. Because we have a private bike program in the Central Business District, yeah. certainly, yeah. or a station. My understanding was that it was kind of understood that anybody would want to be working in the Central Business District, and this was to ensure that any one of these programs would also serve uh -huh. residential districts in Florence Center. That was okay. how I read it. If, if I may, that's yeah. essentially how it was presented by the senior planner. And in fact, actually, uh, yeah, throughout the city's core neighborhoods that are that are included in the URA, B, and C, was the intent. And as described, as uh, Council Murphy and, and Council Nash described, the idea was to make sure that they didn't cherry pick the neighborhood, they didn't cherry pick uh -huh. downtown, which we knew that would be the principal place where most people would set up these systems. The idea was. If you're going to be a private agency and you want to do this and you provide these services, you will also provide them uh, a plan for introducing them into the core neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Except that it says it's only you can only issue permits for systems in the core neighborhoods, perhaps including. So it does exclude central business. One would think. Yeah. Well, by mm -hmm. absence. Yeah. Is that I true? Mean, I think you could, it could be interpreted that yeah. way. That's so, uh, okay. Murphy. Oh, just, I mean, are we, we getting to the point where this should go back to a committee and not try and solve it all here tonight and say, hey. Uh, At this point, I would say yes. Yeah, that we may want to. I could ask the planning staff to bring you back some clearer language for second okay. reading. I know there's some anxiousness to get this done, but at the same time, we're getting kind of organic and something that should have come out of committee more perfected. Is that a motion? I would move that. To, to which committee? Uh, well, first, we have a motion in process. Let's see if it fails. Where, do you want to withdraw your motion for more conversation? I will. Very good. Council Dwight? Uh, the fact, given, given the meeting schedules and the potential meeting schedules, that I, I think that by second reading, there may be proposed amendments from the planning staff. If not, then we can vote it down in second reading or extend it. But I think. Um, this is clearly, a f we red flag this, send it to the planning staff and say, what the hell are you saying? Okay. <laughs> and then, and an absent- minute show. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> but then quotes, yeah. you can attribute it to me, but. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and we had the luxury of having the senior planner here at Legislative Matters to answer whatever questions there were. But if in fact the text is, big, is ambiguous enough that we can't answer the question when it comes up here, then it should be clearer in the right. Yeah. Okay. And 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 Laura was con expressed concerned about the absence of the planners in this in <laughs> yeah. before we started this. So, yeah. Councilor, did you have some? Well, yeah, the, yeah, I I, I, I agree. That was, that was my original suggestion to, to 
in concept approve it on first reading but okay with the understanding that working with planning and sustainability there would be improvements and clarifications made by the time of second reading rather than slow the whole process mm -hmm. down by sending it to committee if okay that works that's fine with me works for me so we'll leave that with an out amendment for the time being okay um, I'll just ask generally before we move on if there's any other comments on any other sections. Um, I really don't have any personally. So anyone else? Well, Council I do, but the question is, yeah. do, we, do we want to do that here or do we well, send, certainly send could. our comments to plan sustainability? I mean, someone has to catalog, you know, the comments and then Laura, our administrative assistant, could share them. Councilor Murphy, do you oh, want think, to go first? I, th I think you should at least tell us what it is yeah. so that planning and sustainability can address that as well before it comes back again, at least identify what your question was. Great. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Number one, the one I identified before, and C, the reference to private programs. If I'm tracking, I think that's the same as uh, SMD programs. Okay. I did want to ask, because in the definition section, are there multiple definitions of, def of multiple programs, but it may have been a, no. uh, okay, so there's just the two. program. Okay, just making sure. I just wanted to make right. sure that it was I, Oh, there's SMD and then the program, program, yeah. Multiple private programs, so that's fine. So that could definitely be flagged. And then a, a second one, if I may, to just move this along. Uh, under D, number two, share operator. Nowhere else is there any reference to share operators. I'm thinking that also means SMD program operators, mm. but I'm not certain. But bicycle share op private um, program operators, I guess. I, 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 I would just strike share personally, and that would operators. That would just, that would well, be, that would solve it too. Would solve it. Yes, operators. That would solve it, so. That's good. So you want to do that real quick? Um, so the motion from Council Bidwell to strike the word share. Second. Second by Councilor Dwight. Any discussion on that amendment? All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed the abstention, so it's amended. And then just one last one. Down under E, pedal assist electric specifications. All, all fleets of pedal assist or ESMDs, and I assume that means electric SMDs. Um, and maybe it's not worth making a point of, but again, it's, it's just, mm. just, just, just kind of jump. We we go through this process of defining things, and then there yeah. are other things that just kind of pop up that weren't defined. So perhaps that would be worthy of, of defining. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and that exhausts your list, or no? Okay, good. Uh, good. Any other dis uh, discussion or things to flag today? Okay, I'm hearing a desire to vote on it tonight on first reading with the understanding that it's coming back for second reading. Okay. And in between, we'll communicate ways with the planning department and the mayor's office. Okay, so if there's no other discussion, I'll ask for a roll call on first reading. Council Dwight. Yes. Council Klein. Yes. Council Dwight. Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Bidwell. Yes. Yes. Okay, for the first reading, that was excellent work. Thank you. Um, no information requests. Any new business this evening? Motion to adjourn. Adjourn, please. Second. Okay. Any opposed to adjournment? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good night. Good night.